Hey everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. And as you see, I'm on vacation again from the sofa. Um, truth be told, I recorded this video one time when I got back to my sofa at our new gig where we are living. And during the video, I called Tim Jones Jr., Tim Jones Jr.'s confession his testimony so when i went back to review it and start editing the whole time i was like his testimony and i was like i i i have to throw the whole video away just throw it all away it's no good throw it all away so i am finishing that up and i have to be outside in the wilderness and that's okay because i like it outdoors i'm an outdoors kind of guy so let's get into this i want to talk about the confession not the testimony confession um Again, if you've been watching my take on this case so far, you already know. And now that I'm refilming this, more information has come out uh, with some other testimony, like in regards to some of his internet searches and things like that. But I, we're, I'm going to try not to jump ahead into that and just focus on the confession. Because even with just his confession, I feel like, pff, done deal. You know, this guy is completely sane. He knew what he was doing. This is very calculated. Um... It, and whatnot. So obviously the whole confession, it's chilling, it's scary, it's it's just heebie-jeebies. Uh, but there's just a few things that I want to focus on because, again, I can make a 10-hour video just talking about all the different dynamics of the confession here. So when we get a conversation going in the uh, chat section below or on Discord or live chats, wherever we all talk, uh, we can talk about this more in depth. So, So let's get started. The nucleus of his confession, that's what I like to call it, that I feel like, you know, it's just like, okay, what, um, is his, I'm going to say, let's just say about Natan, everything about Natan, essentially, you know, basically what I feel like Tim Jones Jr. is trying to say, and is saying, not trying, is that it is Natan's fault that he wiped the whole family out. And he pretty much makes no bones about the fact that if Natan hadn't done what he allegedly did, that Tim Jones would not have had to have killed the entire family. So obviously that in and of itself, you're just like, what? You know, how did you, what? You know, how do you even come up with that? You know what I'm saying? So let's just go over a few points about Natan real quick, and then we'll move on to some other dynamics. So... Now, this is one part, and again, now that I'm refilming this, some of this has come out a little bit more, but let's just kind of focus on this aspect. So, the story that Tim Jones Jr. is presenting is that, you know, something went down to Tom about Natan blowing some sockets out, and that essentially he couldn't tell what happened, he wasn't getting the full story from the kid. And this apparently just sent him into some kind of rage or whatever. So, the way that Tim Jones, in my interpretation, correct me if I'm wrong or if you feel differently, Essentially what he's trying to say is that, you know, he knew that the kid did something with these sockets. He felt like he blew them on purpose. And that the that Natan, I don't mean to keep calling him the kid, uh, that Natan was acting in such a way that something was wrong. Now, I interpret that like, oh, you, do you mean like, you know, because he even said, you know, I don't think he was electrocuted because I didn't see burn marks. So I never really grasped what he was trying to, to you know, Described to us with he wasn't acting right because on one hand I'm thinking from the standpoint of he's not acting right in the way of something's physically wrong with him meaning uh, yeah he got electrocuted or something that you, you know you could imagine a kid but there would be serious distress there wouldn't just be like the kids acting shady because he did something wrong so and I think essentially maybe that's what Tim Jones meant was he the Tom was trying to be you know secretive or whatever now also. Uh, Tim Jones does say, you know, he was probably intimidated by me. Well, I mean, my goodness, of obviously, look what happened. You know, of course he is. You know, and it just goes to show that all these reports from DSS and things of that nature, you know, there was definitely some, some other stuff going on here in this household. So, uh, but basically, you know, he's saying, oh, the, the things, well, I tried to get it out of him. And then he's saying that in or because he wasn't, because Natan wasn't coming clean or whatever, that he, you know, exercised him. Or in his words, I PT'd his ass. Um, pardon my French. So, and then even in that part, he was like, when they asked for how long, he's like, an hour, I made him do squats and push-ups. You know, but it was fun. This is something we did. And I'm like, what? 
you know, that's insane. Like, no, a six year old, that was his punishment. I mean, I could almost see, like, you know, uh, you know, drop me, give me 10, something of that flavor. I mean, I didn't have a household like that or whatever, but so I can't really relate in that aspect. Um, but I mean, doing that for an hour. And then when he says, you know, oh, I finally got tired, so I just sent him to bed. And I'm like, you got tired of watching him? I mean, this poor kid. It's just awful. Um, so that part it just blows my mind. And so then essentially he's trying to say, you know, and I could not remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I felt like in the confession that uh, Tim Jones says something. I felt like he said he kicked him a couple of times in the stomach. But again, I might have misheard that. He might have said something differently. It was a weird, because you know how he kind of talks a little bit weird in the on the videotape? Because his voice goes, and I'm going to get into this, his voice kind of goes in and out a little bit because one second he's talking like this, and then the next second he's talking like this, and then the next second he's talking like this. And you're just like, what is going on here? Uh, and we're going to get into that because I didn't believe any of that. I didn't believe this crocodile tears at all. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a minute. I want to keep continuing on with Natan here. So, again, there's another part of the trial, a testimony, and one of the detectives, and I don't remember who, I do not remember his name right now, but he was talking about when they were interviewing Tim Jones Jr. And essentially, whenever Natan's name was brought up, that Tim Jones just got super angry. So it was like there was this relationship of hatred towards this child, even after the child, he murdered the child. I mean, like, there was something about this kid that he just absolutely hated. And I personally think, I mean, and like, okay, so we all know, for the most part, I mean, I could be trying at times as a child. We all know that there could be some kids that's like, oh, God, that kid's really working my nerves today. And so maybe Natan was that kind of child in the, you know, out of the five kids, maybe Natan was the oldest and most rambunctious, you know, whatever. Um... But to take a personal hatred towards him on that level, that's where it just gets like, what? You know, again, none of the case makes sense, but I'm just trying to assign some kind of, you know, oh, I can recognize this type situation to it. So I'm like, well, yeah, I drove my mother crazy several, I mean, all the time, still do. Um, but where do we draw the line between oh, annihilating a family? You know what I'm saying? So... You know, I just feel like before this leading up, there was some kind of personal vendetta with Natan. And then when the crime occurs, I feel like he definitely looks at I me, and it's Natan's fault in his world that, you know, he wiped out the family. Because essentially what he's saying is, so all this takes place, you know, he sends him to bed, and then he goes to check in on him, and Natan's dead. He doesn't know why, uh, you know, just mysteriously died. And so he's almost alluding to the fact that he exercised him to death, in my opinion. Uh, you can beg to differ, please, you know, drop it in the comments. Absolutely. I want to hear it. Um, but to me, it's almost like he's being a little bit shady. Like, you know, oh, I guess I, you know, accidentally killed him. And then in there he says, so now let me read, before I say this, let me read a couple of quotes from the, uh, the testimony here. So... Here we go. I was just running on fear and I wasn't thinking. Any normal person would have said, let me call the police and to turn myself in. I took the coward route and started following those voices in my head, Jones has heard saying. I'm not thinking anything, but I'm screwed. Logic went out the window. Next one. Well, this is when he goes back to this. So let's talk about this for a second. Um... And then we'll go back to the actual things he said about the exercise and all that. So, I mean, this right here... And again, I think in the beginning where he says, I mean, this tells you everything. You notice, I'm not thinking anything, but I'm screwed. There was not a, I'm not, th I'm not thinking anything, but I'm screwed. How about, oh my God, my kid's dead. I mean, that's just what he tells you everything you need to know. A lot of times I always say this. I'm like, people will tell you everything that you need to know about them in between words, if that makes sense. This guy tells you also in his words, you know, because most people are a little bit more caught. This guy absolutely has no problem. Like, oh, yeah, I was, I was screwed. And again, how he went from, and this is why I just don't believe that this is what it went down. I think that he was just wanting to strike back at Amber. I think that's exactly what this was over. And I think he knew what he was doing. But I digress. So uh, where is it? As any normal person would have said, oh, pardon me. Uh, let me call the police and turn myself in. So let's say that some accident truly did happen. Like this was like, even if he snapped and beat the kid, whatever, and he stopped at one child. Okay, so 
in his world, I think he was trying to think because there's things that he said in the confession and things like that, that essentially he was trying to go with, oh, it was all an accident, the first child. Because he did say the time was an accident and the rest I murdered. How you get to that being the logical step to cover your tracks is to kill four more people, I have no idea. Um, and I don't believe him. Please hold. So, let's say in a normal situation, yeah, he was going to go to prison. He could have possibly gotten manslaughter out of this, um, you know, with one child dead. But this isn't a normal situation. Then he also says the voices in his head. Now, we know at this point that he, this man was sitting here. I don't, I don't know the timeline of this part. If the Google searches he was doing about schizophrenia and stuff like that were before or after this confession. Um, I'm assuming before. So the voices in his head. Now, here's the thing. I could definitely sit here and say, oh, I have voices in my head. I call it an inner voice. And to me, there's a huge difference in an inner voice and voices in your head. Like, you're taking full-on conversations with, you know, some entity inside your thoughts. So, I feel like Tim Jones Jr. is trying to create the pathway of insanity, things of this nature, when in reality, any of us, all day long, we have an inner voice that's like, I mean, mine goes all the time. I mean, that's half the reason why I love doing this, so I can actually let it out. Um, because if I wasn't doing this right here with y'all, this is what's going on in my head. So, and it still is even after I do this. Anyways, so he's going with this whole thing, you know, and I'm like, well, yeah, of course, but the voices aren't saying, I mean, how... I can't even get my thoughts together because right? I'm just like, so the voices told you to kill the rest of your family, uh, you know, and it's just like those inner voices are going, I'm like, well, of course they are. They would for anybody. They do all day long, you know, being like, oh my God, I just did this. Okay, well, let's do that. But his inner voices, I mean, they had a way to cover up the crime and do all this and da, da, da. So let's jump uh, to a little different part here. And I want to go to some of his quotes about what was going on with Natan and the exercise part. So here's what he says. After, after a series of not getting favorable responses out of him, I tried to use more harsh measures to try to get out of him just what he was doing, Jones said, speaking rapidly. I just didn't know what was going on. I was trying to make sense of it. It was out of the ordinary, and he wouldn't tell me. So I'm going to read a couple of different things here, little bullet points. I just PT'd his ass, worked him real hard because he wouldn't answer me. Jones says the exercises were nothing out of the ordinary and he had previously done with his children. We have fun doing it, he added. When a Tom when it still wouldn't fess up, Jones said he told him, Go to bed, man. You're wasting everybody's time. So this right here, I mean, this does show some paranoia. This whole aspect, and he said somewhere where he thought the children were conspiring against him, and again, he could have just been making that up. Or he could have also been thinking that... Okay, if they had DSS involved and all this stuff was going on and Amber, you know, and again, Amber's taking the stand now. She, she described more why he had custody of the children, which makes sense. And bless her heart, I have to do a test separate video of that because I started watching it this morning. And I mean, uh, the anguish she must feel. Bless, I mean, uh, anyways. So... He could have been like, oh, God, the kids are. Because, like, let's say that the DSS is coming around all this. The kid electrocutes himself. Well, they're going to take the kids away. You know what I'm saying? Because it sounds like they're constantly checking in or whatever. So, I mean, I can see this guy being ultra paranoid. Take out whatever was going on with him that led up to this. I can see that going on to a level that he thinks the children are, you know, are they trying to kill you? Is that what you're thinking? Or just mess with you? You know, I don't know. But again, I don't believe it is any way saying that he felt these things because of an insanity issue or th something like that. I just don't believe that. Uh, and again, I talked about this earlier about that we have fun doing it. I don't believe that the children have fun sitting there for one hour doing squats and push-ups. You know, I, at all. Sorry. And then, you know, go to bed, man. You're wasting everybody's time. He just sounds like, you know, one of those ultra, and how do you say this, like, one of those dads, like, tough love, which I think can be good for people. Um, you know, I mean, there's times where I'm like, okay, I could probably could have used some tough love myself in certain arenas from my parents. Um, and definitely I got some of it, but not like that. But this guy takes it to the next level. I mean, it's just like, you know, good, bad, man, you're wasting everybody's time. I mean, it's just like, what are you so upset over? And again, you know, 
I think he's making a lot of this up. I mean, I think that Natan probably really did do something, and I think that he just, like, lost it. And not, not I meaning Natan lost it, but the father lost it. Um, so, let's jump past the, the Natan issue for a little bit, because we're going to revisit that multiple times throughout these video series of videos. Another thing that really disturbs me is how much he circles around to... I messed my life up. My life is messed up. That is his main concern. Every now and then, he it's like he remembers that he has to show remorse for his children's death. So he'll be like, oh, I killed my family. And then he'll come right back around to being normal and talking normally. I mean, like instantaneously. And again, I, I almost want to rewatch the confession, though, listen to the confession, because I feel like... Knowing what we know now about his internet social stuff like that, I'm just like, oh, I'm sure he was just trying to play into that. Uh, and again, I address that. I'm just kind of reading some of my notes here. Um, I address the voices in his head thing. Um, so I think that the investigators during this interview, interview, during this uh, confession, I think that they were dotting their I's and crossing their T's to get rid of any absolute... Uh, possibility for an insanity play you know with all those questions they were asking towards the end i mean it was very clear this man knew right from wrong he knew what he was doing he haphazardly tries to make it look like there might be some situations for an insanity play but i mean just listening to that in court i was like oh dude you're done and so that brings me to the next part is while we're watching him in court listen to his voice and every now and then with that handkerchief i'm just like really you i mean the thing is just the size of his head you know and he's sitting there you know and <laughs> every now and then and i feel like if you watch him like he seems to only cry when he's listening to testimony of you know his own confession that is burying him under the jail you know it's it's not to me like this realization of oh my god what did i do it's oh my god how dumb was i i can't get out of this you know i'm i'm gonna be electrocuted or whatever they do in south carolina um so and, and again like on the audio portion you know where he just goes back and forth and it's it's just bizarre to me i just don't grasp it so and i mean maybe that's a good thing um, and then obviously the details of the confession, which, I mean, we all know these at this point, but you know, what he did to the poor children, putting them in his truck. I mean, he talks about this, like he is going out to grab groceries and going through his list and speaking of list, uh, by the time this is published, there's an, I'm going to link to another video that I talk about the list that he made with a receipt from Walmart and stuff like that. I mean, that's just where I'm like, dude, just no, absolutely not. Don't even consider an insanity plea. I get his lawyers need to go that route. I'll say that on probably every video. I get that they need, that's what they're supposed to do. But I mean, this case, especially I'm like, dudes, you're, you're really grabbing at straws here. I mean, this, this guy has made this very difficult for you. So anyways, this video is long enough. It's going on 18 minutes now. So if you're still with me, I appreciate it. Um, anyways, let's keep talking about this. This is such a fascinating, it, it, the psychology of this is fascinating. I think that the, um, the, the victims, and, you know, and I'm going to include Amber in that. I mean, because just my God, um, everyone who was touched by that and the children, I mean, it's a horrible crime. It's just, it's absolutely horrible and it's completely senseless. And I, I think that, you know, hopefully we can learn something by studying people who do this kind of stuff. Um, so if there is some kind of something to be taken from it. Uh, so anyways, I hope everybody's doing well. I look forward to your discussion, and uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.